following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, November 27th, 2019, season 15, episode number 91. Welcome to another edition of The Break. We are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're going to get you guys ready for Cowboys versus Bills. It's Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. We're going to eat good. No, you guys will eat good, and we will certainly have some good football, hopefully, uh, for you guys to be able to check out. Got my crew here. Let's talk about the hopefully Cowboys. Hopefully, we're, we don't finish the day saying, well, at least the food was good. <laughs> hopefully, it doesn't go down that way. I mean, the food's going to be good regardless. Gonna I know, delicious. but you know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for those that feel sorry for us that we don't get to have Thanksgiving dinner at home, don't. Like, the food at the stadium. Pretty freaking good. I'm not so, complaining. We will enjoy dinner, and hopefully we will enjoy a good football game. Let's talk first about injuries, though. Cowboys had two players that did not practice yesterday, Leighton Van Der Esch, which was expected, Antoine Woods as well. What do we know about Woods? Because I think we all agree Van Der Esch isn't playing this week. So. Neither is Woods. Okay, Woods. so Woods. Is, is that a – what's his injury? MCL. MCL. Because he looked pretty bad. Dave, I think you were walking by me when we were getting off the plane. Uh, last like, Sunday night, I guess it would have been Monday morning, and he didn't look like he was walking very well at all. Is this a long-term thing for him, or is this just kind of a week-to-week? Well, he already did this in week two, and I think it cost him. He was out until the Packer game, I believe. So week two, he was out for the Dolphins and then the um, the Saints after that. So, I mean, you're probably talking a minimum of this game, but the fact that they have you know they're not on a long week they don't get that mini bye week because yeah. the bears is thursday i would guess he'll miss both of these games and oh, then get the mini bye week then he gets the mini bye and so i'm circling uh the rams game for him but the, we'll see the guys that were limited uh talk to me about kind of where they are you got lyle collins jeff Heath, zach martin connor williams the expectation is that in a normal week you'd feel like they're doing pretty well but on a short week how do you feel about it? I, yeah. f- I think they're all available. Yeah, Zach Martin, I think, is going to be the issue there. Not not to play, but just how he, he gets himself ready. Because, I mean, he's becoming you know, one of the older guys. And we saw this week you know, with Tony Romo um, five years ago where he was getting himself ready every Sunday to play. But when he had to play the Thursday game, he was terrible. And that happened again the next year on a short week. And so you wonder with these back injuries and what they're doing to manage it, you hope that, you know, in four days they can get it done. I think he'll be fine, but I'm just saying, and we'll, I mean, he's going to play, but we'll yeah. see if he plays well. I think there's a guy that weighs 340 pounds across from him that gets seven sacks. Every football player I've ever asked about it says, like, you're really only starting to feel like yourself by Thursday, and that's the day that these guys have to play. So it's amazing. Yeah, it is. But I think they'll all be in uniform, even Jeff Heath. He was the one I was worried about, but I think he's trending in the right direction too. But they're probably not going to be feeling great. Yeah, but it is what it is because the league likes ratings. Well, the good thing oh, is if you, this, uh, I know okay. the Cowboys have been doing it since 1960. I know or 67. I just I hate Thursday football. I think it's it's not good for players. But do you watch it? Of course, and that's why they do it. <laughs> it's yeah. like all right, so last year. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, know, know I know why they do yeah. it, and I know yeah. it's not going to change. I just think it's stupid to claim you care about player safety and make everybody play on Thursdays. I just yeah. don't agree with it. Okay. Well. We will be uh, out there on Thursday. The Cowboys will be playing, and uh, hopefully these guys will be uh, prepared to be able to play even on a short week. Let's talk about the inactives, though. I think uh, we've already mentioned Leighton Van Der Esch, Antoine Woods. If you go through the list of the guys from last week that were inactive, it looks like you'd have one one of those guys that could come up. I'll read those names for you and tell me which guy you think should actually come up uh, because you'll have an extra spot. you got Cedric Wilson, Devin Smith, Donovan Wilson. Joe Jackson, Brandon Knight, Tristan Hill. Tristan Hill is coming up for Antoine Woods. Is that it? Is that yep, all that would be the only one. Because last week did, that was the list, and uh, and you and now you're adding Woods to the inactive. List. I, I probably would put Donovan Wilson. Um, I would think he, if he's healthy, he, he might come up over um, maybe Josh Jones because of the uh, because of Heath. Yeah, well, I mean, and he was sick he was last sick, week. So I would assume he he's might over play that. over Josh Jones or. 
I can't even remember the guy's name. Devontae Burton, maybe? Deontay. Yeah, Deontay Burton. Yeah. He's a corner. Um, I was surprised. Should you keep Heath active? I know he's coming yeah. back, but it's like it, it, even him hurting his shoulder again in that play, it just looks so so nasty, the hit, you know, and that that's an area that you're constantly hitting when yeah. you're playing that position. Yeah, both shoulders, too. Yep. Both. So, I don't know. I just I feel bad for him. <laughs> it's a classic but situation. But they get paid a lot, so well, uh, yeah. play. Well, Garrett was surly when he was asked about it today. He was like, did you learn anything else about him this week? Because I didn't learn anything about him. Long pause and then, like, that I didn't already know. It was kind of like... <laughs> Like, I thought he was kind of, you know... Yeah, I guess I, I can see what you're saying there. I wonder why Garrett is so uptight. Mm. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's been... I mean, he, he's been... His boss, well, his boss is just throwing him out there. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know if that is mu- as much of it as he's just... They're not winning like they probably thought they would be. And I his mean, boss that has is a throwing way. him out there. Yeah, but he probably... That's this is probably This is probably nothing that he thought wasn't being... Like, he... You know, you know when you you're know. not performing, right? And so when you're not, when things aren't going well at work, it doesn't take your boss saying anything. You know, you already things know. aren't good. But yeah, it doesn't but help. you know things. It, no, it doesn't help. I but it's, say. It, doesn't, it doesn't make it any. Like it's already bad because you're already like. As a matter of fact, sometimes you're probably sitting there thinking, "I know he's, I know he's thinking that I'm screwing this up, and he's not saying things. So I wonder what he's thinking." Then when he comes out and says it, then at least you know, right? And I, I think I'm trying to put myself in this position, and I'm like, you know, if I'm like, uh, it's been rough, Dave. Like, I know I'm not doing well, but I need to pick it up. Like, I think I'd feel better if you were like, look, Dave's got this long track record of doing well for us. He's going to be fine. Like, if you, if I heard you saying, like, yeah, he's screwing up, man, like, that would ruin <laughs> my doesn't, yeah. But those that are things that happen week. in meetings that you're not in. So you True. wouldn't know that, right? That's a good point. Yeah, wow. Well. Thanks. Well, all right. <laughs> thanks, Derek. Well, now you're a little nervous, right? Thanks, Derek. No, but that's my point. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that Jason doesn't think that when he's six and five with the team that he has and the expectations coming into this season, I don't think that he believes that when Jerry and Steven and maybe even Will are sitting around talking about the state of the team, that his name isn't coming up and there aren't things that are being said that may not be favorable. Right. I, I that's, just that's but, not what he's doing though. But what he's doing and I said this earlier today and I'm not I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I think Jerry's trying to you know, turn over every stone. But is he is Jerry creating a distraction this week? Yes, he is. He's creating a distraction for this team. You think so? Yes. I mean, he's going on NFL Network and <laughs> saying those things and he, on the radio, and he didn't back down for what he said on Sunday. He's saying he's being as harsh as he's ever been. And we're in the locker room, we're not talking about these linebackers and for the Bills. We're talking about what Jerry said. And Jason Witten's asked about Jerry. And Jason, Jason Garrett's been asked about Jerry. So, yeah, he's creating it, but but that's – that's, I mean, he sat around long enough and not said it. Maybe he's like, well, what else can I do? You know what See, I was thinking? Sorry. Right, okay. What I was thinking this morning as I was getting ready, I don't know why, but, and I'm not saying fire the guy right now or anything like that. I know his contract ends, mm-hmm. it's coming up. And, but I was going back and thinking of Jerry and the way he's handled things and how he's fired other coaches just kind of without hesitation mm-hmm. in, in, in the history of different coaches and the way that he's gone about it. I'm like, Wow, I, I wonder what it is that hasn't gotten him to that point where he's like, you know what, I'm kind of fed up with this. I need a different coach because he's done that in the past. But yet with Garrett, he's stuck with him for how many years has it been now? Yeah, nine or like something. Like nine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, I was just wondering, I'm like, what does Garrett have that appeals so much to Jerry Jones? I honestly think that that Jerry at this point, he he wants – he, th- he probably feels like, I hired this guy when he was young. He was a young coach. He didn't have head coaching experience. I thought he was really, really smart. I thought he knew football well. And so I figured when I hired him, I figured I'm in this for the long haul, which means I'm going to have to go through the growing pains to get him to the point where he's a great coach. Like, you think about the great coaches in the NFL. Some of them, it took a while for them to get to be great, right? And I think Jerry honestly believed, maybe still even believes, that it that he will at some point be a great coach, and he just had to let him go through the changes in order to get to that point. I also think we would all agree Jason can be enormously impressive in like a one-on-one or like an intimate setting, right? I'm not talking about his press conferences, yeah. but like if he's heading up a meeting or giving a talk privately or you know a coaching interview, mm-hmm. I bet he. I mean, he's probably blown Jerry and whoever else away more times than you can count because he's organized. He's a good speaker. He has a plan and sticks to it. Good at motivating people. Mm -hmm. Like, 
on the off chance he is to leave the Cowboys, he'll blow somebody away in an interview in the future. Yep. And I think Jerry sees that and th- and thinks or knows or whatever it can translate. It hasn't yet, so, but all of that contributes to why he continues to believe. Somebody told me this early on when I started working here. Jerry wants to win, but Jerry wants to win Jerry's way. Like, without a doubt, he wants to win his way. And so when you ask that question, I think, and you said it uh, perfectly, he handpicked this guy. This was the one. So if Jason Garrett has success, then Jerry is going to get credit for that because he's the one that had the vision way back when and go, this guy is going to be a great coach. And so he's, that's why he's mm-hmm. he's hanging in there. And that's why he probably doesn't want to fire him and won't fire him. He, I don't think he will fire Jason Garrett. I really don't. I if think he doesn't come back, will, it'll be because. The season will yeah. end. There's no See, contract, and you move on. I know, I'm not going to go as far as to say I disagree with you, but that's why I think this week is so interesting because – we're all smart enough to know that there have been some blunt conversations in private. But for Jerry Jones to like come out and publicly say some of the things he's said, I agree with you. Like my gut feeling is like, well, he's not under contract this year. If it doesn't work out, you just let him walk away when the season's over. And there's no need to do something drastic. But some of the stuff Jerry's saying makes me think like if this doesn't drastically pick up Thursday and the week after that, I'm becoming to the point where I'd be less surprised if he didn't make it through the season, but based not, on what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm not buying that because I honestly believe, and again, we're we're all making a lot of guesses here because we don't know what Jerry's really thinking. My guess is Jerry wanted to stir this thing up, and he wanted to put the coaches and the players on notice that, look, what you're doing right now is not good enough. And make no mistake about it, it is not good enough. And I think he's looking at it like, I'm hoping to spur these guys. Right. Either one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to spur them to greatness, or they're not going to get there. And then it's like, okay, well, but we that's, tried. We tried everything. And I guess that's my point is like, maybe it's too dramatic to say it's a line in the sand. But once you put those comments out there and say, like, we need to win some damn games. And I think on Tuesday morning, he said, you're going to see an inspired effort against the Buffalo Bills. Like, if they come out and lose to the Bills and then you know maybe take it a step further and they go up to Chicago and lose in a miserable cold game up there, we've seen that before. Don't you have to make good on I hate to call it a threat, but don't yeah, you have but, to make good on what you said? But but what you said doesn't necessarily say you're going to make a move now. Yeah. You know, and I, here's the problem. If the Cowboys fell to a point where they were out of it, then maybe I buy what you're saying. I don't see. I don't see they that happening. They can't be out of it where they are with now Philly. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Where they are with Philly, I don't think that they're ever going to be out of it. And so you're not gaining anything by putting a new coach in. You're not going to get better by putting yeah. in a new coach now. Now, if you were out of it, then it might just be a definitive thing of being able to say to fans, "Look, this wasn't good enough. He's gone." Mm-hmm. But I don't think you're going to be in that. Well, position another thing that we mentioned is how do the players feel about it? Does it start dividing people inside the locker room, and are they still? following Jason Garrett. So I think that once you start seeing that kind of attitude from players, then it just all goes downhill from there. That's an interesting point because to this point we have never seen, or at least me personally, I've never seen a situation where Jason has lost his locker room. No matter how things, how bad things got, yeah. they always played hard for him and they always gave their best effort. There may have been a couple cha- uh, situations here and there where they didn't perform well, but I never felt like the team wasn't responding to him. Which, for the record, if I had to put money on it, I don't think Jason Garrett would be fired before the end of the regular season. But this is not the status quo. Like, the status quo is something bad happens, everybody's frustrated, the fans are fed up, and Jerry is kind of standing in the middle of it, taking the brunt of that frustration, saying, it's fine, I believe in my guy. And he's not saying that this week. Mm-hmm. And so I have to at least allow that this feels different, yeah. which means you don't know 100% for sure what's going to happen. I, I, think might, go ahead. I think he's fired if they lose Thursday. Really? Yeah. That's, see, that's my point. I, do. I, just, I just don't believe that. I don't well, think well, Jerry's going to do that then? this season. I, I really don't gets, necessarily. Let's say he gets fired on Thursday. What happens then? Yeah. You pick an interim and you have to who? pick an who? interim and look, you know hey, who they, it, <laughs> Come doesn't, on. it doesn't matter do tell me dave tell me but who listen, do you listen, 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 here. this football team was one and seven in 2010 their offense was playing like crap and guess what the offensive coordinator jason garrett got a promotion did he deserve it right then for based off of how he was coaching no yes but at one and seven they were out of it i know you're I, not going to be out of it no matter what happens this thursday but i agree with what dave said i hadn't thought of it until he just said that that's you, scary you don't. I you, make good points from time to you time. You don't. You don't go out there <laughs> and here. throw it out there like that. And then and then and then what? Well, you said that you have to like, win, and and, you, and now you're six and six football team because you just lost to the Bills. Yeah, but but the point is, 
again, we're talking about the, the eternal optimist here. He still is in it. His team will still be at the end of this Thursday, whether they win or lose, they will still be leading the division. But that's right. And I agree and so, with you. And so until until a point where they're no longer in it or they no longer have an opportunity to turn things around, then I don't think that he would make that move. But how many times has Jerry Jones, I don't want to say happily, but willingly kind of taken that heat? Like I brought this up the other day. Remember last year when the offense was a joke? And he went on the radio and said, "Like we're a couple plays away from being the Rams." He got roasted for saying that, and it was it was obviously mm-hmm. BS. But he was standing up for his guys and his team. It's this is not normal. It's not normal for him to not be taking the heat for Jason Garrett and the coaching staff. And I, I don't think, think that means he's going to do anything drastic. But I have to at least allow for the possibility. Think yeah. of this. Okay, it's probably going to be Chris Richard would be the interim coach. Okay, six and six, you lose to the Bills. You don't fire Jason Garrett. You hang in there. They win a game against the Bears, lose to the Rams, beat the Eagles, lose or I mean, or lose to the Eagles or whatever. Whatever it is, say you're eight and eight, and you and you get into the playoffs because you you lost these two games, but you beat the Eagles and the Redskins, and you're eight and eight, and mm-hmm. you get in. Is, is that good for Jason Garrett? Like, and then they lose in the divisional. Right. That's not good. Okay. So, uh, the next scenario: six and six, you fire Jason Garrett. Chris Richard comes in. They win a game, then they lose a game or whatever. Then they they lo- lose to the Eagles, but they beat the Redskins, whatever. They're 8-8, eight and, eight and they get in the playoffs. That's a different story. Now you're looking at it like, well, he saved it. He got him in the playoffs. I think I think that— Did he, though? I mean, because I, I think most people would agree, Jason probably do the same thing. Right. If you're talking about but an 8-8 eight eight playoff team, I mean, that, that's what Jason does, Right. right? No, he never made the playoffs at eight and eight. No. Actually, but, but my point is, well, I'm just he's being an eight hundred, he's a five hundred coach, right? Yeah. But at least you get an early taste of Chris right. Richard and what he can possibly do instead of just going into a full year next year of trying out what he would look like as a head coach. But if Chris Richard didn't win out, did you see enough that made you say, "Oh yeah, he's the guy"? If he, like if, if he, he turns it around, let's say they made the yeah. move and Chris Richard got him to win out. I don't think, and they got the a couple guy. playoff wins. That probably changes your perspective and says yeah. he's your guy. Without that, I don't know that I but would. But at yeah. least they, they get to see how he is in those meeting rooms as a head coach. How he take like, how he handles everything. How team responds to him. Yeah, yeah. Because it. it's like, are you gonna magically turn this team around? I don't know, and I don't think anybody would really expect that to happen. Or if it did, great. But at the same time, you know, it, if, it, it, he doesn't get that much time to create magic, you know. And when you mentioned Garrett becoming the interim interim mm-hmm. coach. <laughs> What was the season like at One that point? One and seven. Oh, it was horrible. It was so horrible. it was like oh, out. Was and, they were qu- and they were quitting yeah. on and, the team. And that's the thing. Honestly, the reason why that happened is not so much even, I don't think, because they were 1-7. and seven. It was how they got to 1-7. Yeah, and seven. Those last two games before the coach got fired, they basically were not playing football. Like, they were just getting just beat up. And so it, when it gets to that point where basically they're not, they're not responding to the coach or the coach just doesn't have answers for them – then you have to make a move just because you have to make a move. And it's middle of the season. You're already 1-7. and seven. You're not going to the playoffs at that point. So I think that was a whole different scenario is, than where you are right if, now. If, if he's fired, do you think that the, the next coach is here right now? No. I don't. And that, I honestly— I think they would go way more experienced head coach. Because, you know, it kind of bounces back and forth. You get a really experienced one, and then you get one that's, that yeah. you take a chance on. Then you get a really experienced one, and then you take the one that's, that you take a flyer on, right? Which I is think, why— I think he is here. You do? You think so? Who? Right. 82. Oh, Stop God. it. <laughs> Stop it. No, don't do that. No. His face. <laughs> Nick's like, Nick's yeah. like, no, yeah. no, no I, stop I, it. He, he looks offended. That, that's troll. He that's looks got offended. troll written all over it, man. He Turn looks, players stop. into he coach Sean Lee becomes that you think so. maybe ten years from now. Yeah, not not right call, now. they're going to call nine out of the booth. He's going to come <laughs> in and be the OC. I can't believe I said Ken. Caden. Caden, clip this. Yes, sir. Clip this because when this happens, <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to, you're gonna show Derek be like, oh, stop it, stop no, it, you're stop. trolling. So we'll have uh, Witten as a coach, bring back Romo, take Sean Lee as the <laughs> linebacker coach, coordinator. Romo's good. Coordinator. Here's here's the thing. I've really enjoyed this conversation, but. Till I messed it up. Yeah. No, I don't know. It. It's a. I think that's it, it's at the very least. It's a fun than guess. You think. Really? At, the, at the no, I I think it's. it's I don't really want to go there. It's right interesting. Now. That's a whole different but show. I kind of agree with what you said about the back and forth of a guy that you, you know, a younger guy. Mm-hmm. But okay, if that's not the case, if you're going to just make a splash, what what are you doing? 
How many draft picks are you giving up for New Orleans? I'm sorry. I can't even Jesus talk like that. God. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on. Well, I'm just saying, well, what, what, what are you going to do? How are you going to splash this thing? He's, Bill's 70, 72, so you're not going to do that. Yeah. Jimmy's good in the booth. I mean, I mean, there, there well, are guys are out there. Hour, he's I, and good. I, I think we wait and have this conversation uh, at the end about, of the season. He's about three hours up the road. I don't want to. I don't want to get too far into this conversation. I think that's a conversation we have after the season's over if it doesn't go the way that that we suspect. Um, nah, it would have to go in order for the Jason other one. to stay. But let's go ahead and take our final All break. Right. I mean, our first break. <laughs> first break. Yeah. When we come I back. I have so much more to say about no, this. No, because we still got to get some yeah. Buffalo Bills, and we're talking about stuff we can talk about <laughs> I, I bet six you, weeks from now. I bet you most of the, fa- the, most of the people fun. listening would rather listen to us talk about the coach. Okay. I guarantee you. Let's take a break. Speed Let's round take a break the and yeah. come back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little Bill talk. We'll be, we'll be right back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Ready? Okay. Give Give me an S. S. Give me an O. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Back to the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the second segment of the break. This Live better from be WBC Mortgage Studios Fine. at the Star. Dave. I'm sorry. Dave, they did a lot of work. No, Tell honestly, me about the Buffalo honestly, defense. It's Thanksgiving week. Like, I mean, I I did it, but I didn't. I probably didn't grind as hard on this one as I have on others. Really? Sorry. I mean, whatever. We're being honest with people. Right. Yeah. Uh, they, no, they're, the Bills are really good. They're third in overall defense. Um, their their secondary is really what makes them go. Uh, they're only giving up 16 points per game. I said yesterday they've scored 20 or less points in half of their games and still managed to win half of those. Do they have anybody as good as Gilmore? Yeah, they do. Guy by the name of Tredavious White who went to LSU Agriculture and Mechanical College. Okay, so I'll give you it's Claiborne. DBU. You gotta be it's unbiased DBU. here when you're doing this okay. analysis. Uh, no. Morris Claiborne he's, went to LSU. He's he? a, okay. Well, so did <laughs> Eric Reed, Tyron Matthew, Patrick Peterson. All right, we don't have to get into that. Um, he's really good. Danny McCray. He's really good. Not taking that bait. He's really Dave good. Danny McCray's good, and Danny McCray's our guy. I'm he not follows. He fo- he he's a classic cover corner. He follows his man. He held Cortland oh. Sutton to one catch for 27 yards last week. Cortland, Cortland Sutton's good. He's not as good as Amari Cooper. I'm not saying he is, but but um, every time Amari's had to face those kind of cornerbacks this year, it hasn't ended up great. Xavier Howard was considered that kind of cornerback. Yeah, he, he kicked Xavier Howard around. Yeah, AT&T he did. Yeah. Stadium. Do you know the stats? It's unbelievable. Yeah. The it, difference it, in home it, and away. It's an. It's like it's like having two. The last two nineteens. It's like having Bryce Butler. Sorry, Bryce Butler and Amari <laughs> Cooper home and away. It's a completely different player. No, it's he's it's unbelievable true. at home, and then he's been okay on the road. So and I think home. I th- he's back at home. There won't be any you know crappy conditions. Trey White. I mean, he's super athletic. He's a press man beast. He's his footwork is great. He's I mean he's physical for a cornerback. He's still a cornerback, but. Uh, he's a willing tackler. He's got great ball skills. Four picks this year. He's got as many picks on his own as the entire Dallas secondary. Um, 
He's mm. really good. I completely expect him to follow Amari everywhere. I think Amari can still have some success, but that is probably the number one matchup to watch. Um, they got pass rushers. Nick brought it up. Jordan Phillips, journeyman defensive tackle, kind of came out of nowhere to have seven sacks for this team. Who are he, you? Uh, well, he's kicking ass. You have one that says, how much do you weigh? 340. 340. Oh. Yeah, he's like more of a nose for too. For seven he's... sacks for 340. Oh my gosh. That's on, I mean, there's got to be a Playing defensive stat. tackle? Yes. Yeah. Well, what else is he going to play? <laughs> no, I'm just, but I'm, I'm, I'm like thinking I'm if he's 340 and he's got seven Safety. sacks, I'm like, is he just like a really big defensive end that's so tall that 340 doesn't, like, that's a huge guy to get seven sacks. <laughs> 340. Which, geez. This is, this is really interesting for me. Being a draft nerd is like they're kind of the island of misfit toys. They've taken a lot of other people's really talented pass rushers and turned them into guys that produce. Star Latulale, you might remember yep. him, first round pick, Carolina. He's playing tackle. Jerry Hughes, who was a flop for Indy mm-hmm. out of TCU, TCU yeah. new life in Buffalo. He's become like one of their best players over the last four or five years. Trent Murphy, who was actually the guy the Washington Redskins drafted. I believe, mm-hmm. with the pick that the Cowboys gave him for Demarcus Lawrence. He's up there playing well. Uh, they have Ed Oliver, which I mm. was sh- oh yeah, I was shocked you're at this, but he's not he's not even starting. Really? He's, that's how that well their you, tackles yeah, are playing. Tells you a lot. He does have three sacks, so he's I mean, he's pretty good. Some I mean, they've got they can rotate. But he's coming home to Texas, so he might have a thirty three sacks on the season. The big stat I would advise you to know is tied for the NFL lead in tackles for loss, sixty nine. Really nice performance there. Um, That's fun. What else? Um, I think their secondary is is really their strength. You got Trey White, Micah Hyde playing safety. He's kind of a rover, does a little bit of everything. Um, I think of Buffalo like oh, cold weather team gonna load up and stop the run. Like I don't, they're not that impressive against the run. Um, they are thirteenth, one hundred five. It seems like they. You can get them out of position. Misdirection seems to work on them. Philip Lindsay and the other guy. Um, Royce. Yes, Royce. thank you, Freeman. They both had decent success, kind of, again, leading those guys out of the way. You might remember Tremaine Edmonds. He was their first-round pick um, out of Virginia Tech. Very big, very scary-looking, but I seemed like I noticed him like being in the wrong gaps and taking the wrong angles a lot. So I don't think the second level as far as run defense is that impressive, which they're good at getting after the quarterback, but I think maybe there's so much focus on getting up the field that they lose gap discipline. And I think that's why they're probably leading the league in tackles for losses. They'll get you if they can penetrate, but they're also susceptible if mm-hmm. they don't get there. So I think there's success to be had on the ground. I think their secondary is pretty stingy. Um, Kind of similar to the Pats, honestly. Of course, you have the benefit of not having to play indoors. Is this one of those kind of secondaries or defenses as a whole that you think, even if they have a good day or a successful day in trying to limit Amari Cooper, that it it will affect the other receivers as well? And maybe you can't oh. Gallo can't have a chance to get off, or Cobb they, can't have a chance to get off. They have been flagged. Uh, I saw a stat for pass interference um, quite a bit. And I think Jason has called the league and told them to watch out for pass interference because <laughs> that's job, what Jason. coaches do. Yeah, good job. They do that. No, you know make sure you remind I think, them before I think the game. They do have a lot of PI. Yeah. This is a funny. This is a funny aside that I thought about when everybody was freaking out about Belichick. You know, telling them to emphasize trips, which is Garrett's told us before. He's like, yeah, sometimes you do that. And you say, hey, you know, this guy likes to. Yeah. He gets shovy at the top of the routes. So watch out for that. But he said a lot of times what'll happen is it'll work against you. Because now the refs have this heightened awareness and they're like looking for everything, and all of a sudden your guys are getting flagged for the penalties you were telling them to watch out for mm-hmm. from the other guys. I didn't see the Patriots getting called. Yeah, yes, it, it worked work. out for the Pats, but <laughs> yeah. may and that's why you inform your guys from the team. Hey yeah. guys, we're letting the league know about this, so you better clean up your game and not make mistakes. Trust me, I'm not saying that's a good idea. Next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, mm, yeah, right? I would right. love that <laughs> from JG to AG. <laughs> <laughs> That would be so. Press conferences would be fun again. They oh, have, you wouldn't want to hear me talking oh, in the yes, locker room. Oh, some of the things I would, I would say. Trust me, I would want to hear every bit of that. They have a really good slot corner by the name of Teron Johnson. I don't – I mean, that that's harsh to say. I don't, nobody on their secondary is as good as Trey White. But I do think – I mean, they have the tools to limit the passing game. Of course, they were playing Brandon Allen last week. Mm. 
a little bit of a difference yeah. between him and, and Dak Prescott. And they haven't really have they played a really quarterback offense? What's the best one other than the Patriots? Brady. But they did a great job against the Patriots. I think yeah. they I mean, lost the, that the, game. The Eagles obviously put up points against them, right? Yeah. yeah. The Eagles hammered them. Yeah. Just I mean, and it's one of those things where like you lose the plot, you're playing from behind. Yeah. Um so you know, we were looking at stats on the the Bills offense. I don't know if you mentioned it last week, but or yesterday, but Josh Allen has more rushing touchdowns than uh, Lamar Jackson. I did yeah. mention that he's got a lot. He's uh, got no. seven. He's got seven. Lamar has six. Now, obviously, Lamar has a lot of you know rushing yards. <laughs> yeah, but right. he's third in the NFL in rushing yards behind uh, Lamar and Kyler Murray. You know, so he's. I mean, he, he's pretty good. But that's also what, and I think it was you that, that has been saying this that that's the part in the red zone. If you could use Dak, Dak more. You you not only it's is not only a good thing for him, but it also helps the offense from the standpoint that the it creates one more wrinkle that the defense has to pay attention to that hopefully opens up other things and the Cowboys just don't they're not consistently ready to use that. It seemed like at one point, and maybe this was even last year, they were doing it a little bit more. Like this year, I can't think of a lot of situations at all in the red zone where they're allowing Dak or they're calling plays for Dak to use his legs. Right. I, I mean, and I said yesterday, like, Josh Allen is not noticeably more athletic than Dak. And just, yeah, I mean, I, that needs to be part of his repertoire. And, yeah. I mean, you don't, he doesn't need to average 60 yards a game like Josh Allen does. I think, right. I think a lot of that is because Josh Allen is not there as a passer. Right. I mean, a lot of, I mean, they do design runs, but a lot of that is him pulling it down when he doesn't see it and scrambling. Yeah. So I like Dak hanging back in the pocket and making plays with his arm. But he's athletic enough that that should be something he does on a weekly basis. All right, we'll take our final break. Come back. We'll get some questions from you guys. Call us, 888-855-2297, or hit us on Twitter. You can hit me at Derek Eagleton. We'll take uh, questions both ways. We'll be right back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. OtterBox, the company that builds wildly overproductive phone cases? The one and only. But cases are just the start. OtterBox is the official outfitter of tailgating. If they can keep my phone safe, what can they do for my parking lot party? How about protecting your beverages from suboptimal drinking temperatures with their Elevation Tumblers? And OtterBox Elevation Tumblers come in three sizes. A 10-ouncer, a 20-ouncer, and even a 64-ounce grass. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation tumblers at OtterBox.com. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this... the Seat Geek app and let's go. Seat Geek. Hey Cowboys Nation, this season when the Cowboys win, you get to experience the sweet taste of victory because if the Cowboys win, the next day Duncan is offering a free medium hot or iced coffee. So don't just celebrate the Cowboys success from the sidelines, head to Duncan and treat yourself to real victory because this season Cowboys fans aren't only winning on game day, they're winning the next day too with a free medium coffee. Cowboys Nation runs on Duncan. Excludes cold brew. Limit one per guest. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Back to the break. Final segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Nick, what you got for us? Uh, I've got Christmas at the Star. I mean, they're just we're gonna just hammer that in here. Uh, November twenty second <laughs> through December twenty first. We're already underway there. Every Friday and Saturday at the Star. Uh, this week they have Tony Casillas lighting the show, and also Jason Witten on Saturday night with his family lighting the Christmas tree up there. It's a pretty big Christmas tree. Yep. Nice. Be nice. All right, let's jump into some phone calls. You can call us 888-855-2297. We got a call from Rob in Vegas. Rob, what up, Rob? Hey guys, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. First of all, thanks. You too. You, too. Thank you. you know, Jerry's age makes him desperate, and when Jerry's desperate, he makes great coaching decisions. Hmm. He buys the team for 140 million. 
high as a national champ, Jimmy Johnson. Unfortunately, he lets him go, high as another national champ, Switzer, to make up for that. Then he goes off the rail, and then he hires Bill Parcells because he needs a new stadium built. Now, I agree with Nick. If they lose Thursday, I definitely see a scenario where they fire Garrett, they, they promote Chris Richard because now they give him a four-game head start to evaluate uh, maybe he is the future coach. Who knows? But I, 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 and I, and I disagree, Derek. I think if when you fire somebody, let's be honest. If you fire Dave right now, please don't. Nick, Nick is going to be like, oh wow, I, I got to be on my toes. It, it just sharpens everybody up. You have to write all the articles. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be happy with that. He's not going to be happy with that. No, I don't like that. It may not last a long time. Well, look what happened when Garrett took over that one season. I think they went five and two. It just shot, it makes everybody on their toes. And I think that that's what Jerry's trying to do. He only got four, five games. He says, if whatever I got to take to give you five games, if that gets me four in one and gets me on a roll for the play, I think he's willing to do whatever it takes. So I want, I want to be shocked if he's gone. If they lose Thursday, which I hope they don't. Yeah, but talk about the logistics, though, of when you bring in a new head coach, then is can he really affect a lot of change? Because at yeah, the end of the day, yeah, but they're not bringing him in, though. No, no, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying if you're if you're if you're Hold if on. you're promoting somebody, can you affect a lot of change in a short period of time like that? Yes, that's go- we did okay. a documentary yes. on it. Yeah, we did a documentary did on Garrett uh, changing uh, everything in four days. Yes, especially and what a guy they do? like Chris Rashad, who was totally different than Jason Garrett. I mean, that's night and day. So that especially, I mean, if you promoted uh, the offensive coordinator, no. He's very similar to Garrett. You promote Chris Rashad, that voice is going to be so different than Garrett. I think it would shake them up immediately. But but is the problem with this team that they're not properly motivated? Because if that's the case, then yeah, you're right. You can affect change because you just change the voice and the message. And maybe that motivates them a different way. I don't hear anybody saying maybe, this team isn't properly motivated. I hear people saying it's not being properly coached. That's, those are two well, different I, things. I, I think it's both. But honestly, I think what it is is Jason Garrett was a substitute teacher all year. When you didn't give him the contract, these players – Subconsciously saying, "Listen, I'm going to be here longer than you are." I don't agree with I that. Mean, I don't, I don't I agree with that, man. I don't I agree with that. Voice. I think his voice was lost. And let's face it, we've been talking about this for years. I've been calling in, and we always said the same thing about him. He's a terrible game day coach, and he's never gotten any better. All right, thanks okay. for the call. I mean, yeah. I mean, I... well, so that's. And listen, you get it like you get in you get in trouble with fans like I've been bickering with fans on Twitter for the last two days is like I'm I'm not trying to convince you that you should like Jason Garrett. Right. But I don't I don't think that's true that he's lost, you know, that that the players don't listen to what he has to say or they've or they've tuned him out. Although I will say. We keep talking about the slow starts like that's the one area. I mean, I I mean, it's it's harsh to say, like, are they motivated? But they seem to come out I, flat more often you, than not. And motivation seems like it's part of that. I gave you the wrong scenario when I was talk, talking earlier about the last four games. You don't fire Jason Garrett. He goes 3-1. and one. He wins the last two, and he beats you know one of the Bears. 3-1. and one. They're 9-7. and seven. They make it to the playoffs. They lose. He's definitely out, 9-7. and 6-6, six and six, you fire him. Chris Richard comes over. He goes 3-1 and one down the stretch, and they win the division and go to the playoffs. That right there is a totally different nine and seven. He might even get the job. That's that's really I, I said eight and eight. That's not a good but. Scenario. But how is that? Because I, I don't know that I don't know that conventional wisdom doesn't say that Jason can't get this team to nine and seven. Yeah, too. but but they don't want Jason's nine and seven. Nobody wants that anymore. Nobody wants Jason's nine and seven because three. Other and, than the guy that you said earlier. Who has a vested interest in him doing well? He wants his nine and seven. Nah, he, he he's not going to hire. He what? at nine and seven and missing the playoffs. He's or, missing or nine the and playoffs. Seven yes, and losing in the first round of the playoffs at home. You no, know, he's going to be fired. Oh, but three right. and one, you look at it different. You're like, wait a second. If you give him, if you give him a whole season, three and one, is twelve and four. Right. right? If you know, <laughs> if yeah. you yeah. know, if you know that it's going to play out like that, great. The problem is. And that's the reason why I think it doesn't matter about what happens Thursday. Because right now, you're still leading the division. That, that's why there's no, no, here, here's there's the no reason why right, they would make a change right now. It's because they're still leading the division. Here's take, the problem. Take me there, A.G. You talk about this talented team, and I know that's 
you've said differently, Nick. Yeah. It's like, oh, are they really that talented? But we talked about it during training camp, how much talent there is on this team as far as the players. You want to make sure, because next year's roster is going to be different than this year. So you want to make sure, and I think that's how Jerry sees it and where all the fr- frustration comes from is – a wasted year with this group of talented players that you're not going to be able to replicate next year. So what do you do with that? Do you go all out and stick with Jason Guerin, what he's able to do? And like yesterday, I was thinking, I was looking at the schedule and realized, damn, we have five games left on the schedule. And still, we're trying to like figure this team out. Oh, we're still trying to find out what the Cowboys are about. And it's like, what else do you need to find out at this okay, point? Okay, so, so here's my question then. What do you guys think is the biggest problem that would cause Jason Garrett to lose his job? And I'm talking about his coaching acumen. What do you think is the biggest issue? He's not winning enough games. Why? <laughs> I, I can come <laughs> up with like question. 18 different but, but reasons. Is it, is it scheme? Is it game day decisions? What is it that you think is the biggest problem for him as a coach that would end up making him lose his job? I think they don't win in the fourth quarter. Okay. Like they don't. This team has not been a clutch team. So that's my question. So... You're going to then say, okay, after this week, let's say they lose, you get rid of him. Mm -mm. You're going to make – hold on. Okay, sorry. You're going to make the the guy that right now runs the secondary your head coach. How much is he going to affect a difference in the things that ultimately would affect him losing in the fourth quarter, whether that is offensively they're not getting off to a fast start – they're not being able, from a scheme standpoint, they're not being able to get Amari open. Like, whatever the things are, you say, hey, Jason needs to do a better job at coaching. What makes you think a defensive-minded guy, because I think right now we're all looking at this offense and saying there are problems here. What's gonna, What makes you think that that's going to change anything to where you're going to get a different result in a short period of time? It's one thing if he has a whole offseason to rethink how he does things, to put different guys in place, tell them how he wants to change philosophically what he's doing. You're talking about doing that on the fly with four games left He's been to ready go. for this. Chris Richard, since the moment he got here, I talked to him, and I'm like, hey, what's your vision here? He's been ready for a head coach how position. Does, but how does he enact that stuff in with four games left he to says, go? That's he says, we haven't been down here all day down in the red zone. We're going to go fourth, fourth down. It's fourth and seven. It's not manageable, but we're going to have to go for it. We're going to go for it. He's a more aggressive. He's an aggressive. His approach is more aggressive. And that doesn't mean that just because, and that's one thing I don't like. He's the best option, I think. But just because he's the loudest, and everyone says, "Ooh, man, that guy's motivated." So, okay, I said this the other day. Tom Cable from the Raiders, Mike Tice from the Vikings. They seemed pretty intense too. Were they good coaches? I mean, mm-hmm. just because you bark a lot doesn't necessarily mean you're a good coach. And just because you don't doesn't mean that you're not. Same I'm thing not with Tony Dungy, right? I'm just, and I do think he would get the opportunity. But I think to answer your question as an aggre- like just an aggressive style that we. Think that we are you, see from yeah, him? are you sure though that's who he is? Because I'm not sure what, what you know is his personality is that, I'm but is he, sure would he call a game like this? Tomorrow's I, food will be good. That's the only thing that I know <laughs> right now is that, that this don't, is what I know. Like I, I just I don't really think that matters. Like Nick nope. Nick made a documentary about Garrett turning a lifeless one in seven team and getting him to a respectable finish. Like and he was ready too, Amber. If, like he was ready his if whole you, life. So if Jerry there's Jones there's something to be said for that. If Jerry Jones is ready to pull the trigger, and for the record, I don't think he will be win or lose tomorrow but if he was all that matters is that it's not the guy that you lost faith in i don't think it really matters like well what are you going to do differently it's just you're not what i have decided isn't working anymore i think it's that simple honestly i get it and i and then to be honest with you i think if this was the middle of the season i would be more inclined to believe what you guys believe i think right now with where you are in the season and where you are in the division i just don't foresee that happening let me let me be clear basically I, I'm sorry to say this to y'all. Tomorrow's game's really not that important. It's an AFC game. Right. No matter what happens, the Eagles can't catch them. And then they've got four games against the NFC to do it or don't do it. Right. I, so I really I I don't think that it matters in the grand scheme of, like, do you need to fire the guy? Yeah. Having said that. <laughs> and I knew that was coming. Having said let's that. Let's pick their game, sir. Right. Do, yeah, y'all, do y'all agree or disagree? <laughs> like, what I have learned through 11 weeks this season is that without a shadow of a doubt, anything short of like a sizable playoff run means a change in tenure. That's my belief. That is my belief. And yeah. like, I didn't always know that because in September I was like, well, if they go 12-4 and four and lose before the N- NFC title game, is he really going to yeah. make a change? That's what Jerry's comments told me. Right. That's confirmed it At for me. At this yeah. point, I'm sitting here saying 
the season has been a disappointment up to this point, barring vastly exceeding expectations from here on out, I don't think it'll be good enough. Right. That's what I think. All right, so let's pick the game for tomorrow. Let's go around the table. Amber, we're going to start with you. Who wins the game? I Honestly, I, I still see it, it. It could go either way. I mean, the Cowboys know how to pick it up on games like these, so I could see them finally clicking again and making it look like they're good. And I, But then at the same time, I can see them just same crap, losing the game, the same way they've been losing all these other games. So... I don't know. Pick a side. Uh, shoot. Pick a side. <laughs> uh, whatever. They got me. They got me. I'm picking the Cowboys. <laughs> that they doesn't sound like much conviction. You just <laughs> voiced every Cowboys fan in the world. They like, still freaking got me. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> All right, Dave. This is the Jason Garrett special. Like everything we just said, <laughs> what do I always call him? He's Michael Myers. <laughs> We're, we just had a whole show. <laughs> we just had a up. whole show <laughs> talking about the end Crazy of the guys. Jason Garrett era. <laughs> The Bills are better than a lot of people want to give them credit for. This won't be an easy game. But contrary to what some people think, like Rob in Vegas, the team has not tuned him out, quit on him, whatever you want to say. They will play hard. It will be a close game, but they will win, you know, 20. It'll be a weird score, too. It'll be like 26 to 20. But the Cowboys will they'll pull out a win. That sounds like an overtime touchdown. Something. Mm. Or maybe just a dramatic like two field goals because they can't score in the red zone and the Bills yeah. are driving and it's Josh Allen. I don't know. Something. Have like a great that. Wednesday. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thanks. Turn Do you see down. anybody jumping in the red kettle? Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be some red kettle jumping. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it'll be it'll be Zeke probably. He'll throw somebody in there. Um <laughs> This is I, I agree. This is a Jason special. This is one of those games I've seen it a long before he was the coach. It's just when when it just seems like that it's it's about to be explosion here, something weird happens. So I'm gonna say something weird happens in this game. The Cowboys win, <laughs> thirty-one to seven. Whoa, <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. Y'all were wow. calling for the Cause, blowout. Cause wow. I actually, I was actually going the same way with this because I think, I, I think people underestimate I to, said that too on a short week how hard it is to have to travel on the road. Like, not only are they dealing with what the Cowboys are, where you said earlier you start feeling right about Thursday, but you only really get one day of practice because you're right now the Bills are traveling. Like the Cowboys, they have have a little practice a day. They'll have some other things they can do. They don't have to travel. They, the Bills are traveling today. Mm-hmm. That is a that is a lot to compress into that short a period, and I do believe the Cowboys have a built-in advantage because they do this every single year on this weekend, on this week, on this holiday. They know what Thanksgiving looks like on a short week in Dallas, and I think that matters. Not only that, I also think I look at what what the Bills, what happened to the Bills when they played the Philadelphia Eagles, mm-hmm. and I believe this offense. I believe this offense. Will put up points because that's the one thing. There've been only a few games this year where the offense didn't score and score a lot. I think they'll score a lot this game. I think it ends up being 31-10 Cowboys. I'm gonna change mine. I want to go 31 to 13. I'm gonna give them a couple more field goals. But I want to. Wow. All I'm saying no, is, uh, well, I have to write it in the gut feeling, and I don't want it to. Yeah. I don't want it to be. Oh, you changed it up. I have to actually put it on paper. You know, I've 31-13. I picked them to win, but I've seen the Cowboys take some massive L's on Thanksgiving. It's happened. 14 it happened. Eagles. It's happened. Garrett is 17 four and five Chargers. on Thanksgiving. Really? I would yeah, have really? guessed I didn't he had a guess his best win record wise. What? what? His best win is against a 6 3 and 1 Redskins team in 2016. Yeah, they won He's by eight. He's beaten the 3 and 7 Dolphins, okay. the 4 oh, and 7 okay. Raiders, All right, Caden. and the 6 and 4 Redskins. Okay, All right. down. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Why are y'all giving Caden a hard time? That's, because that's we're, Dave's because, job. Because <laughs> that we've got uh, hanging with the boys over here, like cussing oh. us out, ready to come on. So I ain't worried about them. What are they gonna say to me? I, I Nate, just, you hear that? I was I was put on this earth to give Caden a hard time. I know you were. All right, hey, guys, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Then we'll be back on Monday to break it all down for you. Till then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia, we want you guys to have a happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you later. This has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com. Radio. So, are we doing a show? DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?